Stand by for action. Thank you, Tony. My name is Dave Miller. I am the Unpleasant Blind Guy. As I'm sure you've heard many times by now, freedom-loving people across the planet face many challenges in the year 2019. That's the thing about bad ideas, people. They do tend to travel. So a concept put forward in one country can be seized on by people of ill intent in another country with a view towards limiting civil liberties. Now, one of those concepts went through its gestation process and is being matured now in Canada. I quote from Jihad Watch, a pricey plan of, quote, action, end quote, by Canada's Heritage Committee against, quote, Islamophobia, is about to launch. It is in response to the controversial anti-Islamophobia motion M103, which deemed Canada to be a country with a, quote, climate of fear, end quote, toward Muslims and in need of government help for this, quote, fear, end quote, to be, quote, quelled, end quote. Now, this came from June the 14th of 2018, guys. And I'm bringing this stuff from Canada up to you, my fellow Americans. Because as we know, the new democratically controlled Congress is going to be taking power in a couple of weeks. And we know how much the left love to limit free speech. And this time... Their compatriots in another country have a completely new and different angle on it that they are eventually going to try and sell to the American people. And I knew this, guys, a month ago. That's when this is being recorded, by the way, the first part of December 2018. Now, what you're about to hear is excerpts from the English Defense League radio show hosted by Jeff Mitchell, And that can be heard, by the way, at 3.30 p.m. Eastern, Thursdays and Sundays on Blog Talk Radio currently. We're going to begin this series, and it's going to be a two-part series because it is this important with the show that Jeff and I did on the 29th of November, 2018. You see, even back then, guys, when I saw the story that I'm about to talk about on this show, I knew that this could be the genesis for one of the final nails in the coffin of free speech in the West. Americans, believe it. It can happen here. And remember, I will be providing source documentation at UBG Contact on Twitter. That's the show's primary contact point. But I can also be reached as Dave Milner on Facebook, the Tea Party community in MeWe, and a Magador on Trump Town and Gab. And now to the excerpts from the English Defense League radio program, and I will be providing extra commentary here and there during that segment. This one here comes from Breitbart, and you've got it for the chat, Jeff. It's by Lee and Deacon, and it was put out on the 27th. You know, and I found this, I have to say, out of Jihad Watch. They're okay, UK lawmakers call for Islamophobia to be officially classed as racism. And you know how bad the laws are concerning racism in the UK, all right? Especially when it's this kind of fake racism, since Islam is not a race. Yeah, Islam is not a race, but they're trying to turn it into one through the back door, in my opinion. Anyway. Subhead on this one is a group of British parliamentarians, some of the stuff you'll believe, Jeff, have demanded Islamophobia be officially classed as a form of racism in the UK, claiming the country is deeply prejudiced and unfair towards Muslims. Oh my God. You know, I mean, I'm if, not if, damn if, any of them are Muslims themselves that made that mm, point. Mm. 
Yeah, exactly. There you go, Dan. Okay. The new parliamentary report blames prevalent Islamophobia for divisions, hate crimes, yeah, right, and even terror attacks. <laughs> yeah. It also appears to reject claims criminalizing comments about uh, Islam will restrict free speech and calls for an official definition of, quote, Islamophobia, end quote. Uh, examples of Islamophobia listed including claiming it is terrorism to support an independent Palestine, calling Muhammad a pedophile, which is only the truth, by the way, and claims of Muslims spreading Islam by the sword or subjugating minority groups under their rule. That's all supposed to be about to be classified or what they want to be classified as Islamophobia. All right, now, the document comes from the All-Party Parliamentary Group, APPG, on British Muslims, uh, which is led by leading anti-Brexit Tory MP Anna Salbury. Why don't you go with the labor, you b- <clears throat> oh, Sorry. Um, did, did I say that? I didn't say that. Okay. Tory peer Baroness uh, Warsi, the group's treasurer... <laughs> She's that, a fair. You got to be kidding me. Be <laughs> oh yeah, man. Come on. Commented on the document release. Islamophobia is a form of racism, like anti-Semitism. It's time it got its own definition. Uh, Labor MP Wes Streeting added, "Islamophobia isn't just anti-Muslim hatred. It's about everyday discrimination that takes place, targeting." Okay, he calls it Muslimness. Okay, there's a new word. Or perceived oh, uh, or perceived Muslimness. Muslimness. Uh, it is rooted in racism. Muslimness, and, more like that. Muslimness. <laughs> yep, uh, yep. And is a type of racism. It can be deliberate or unconscious bias. So, you know, if these guys have their way, people in the UK will break the law even when they don't know it. Uh, the findings were also backed by the Muslim Council of Britain, linked well, well, to linked oh to the pro caliphate Can you believe that? Yeah, yeah. Linked to the pro caliphate Islamist Muslim Brotherhood, which was wow. recently criticized for working with groups calling for apostates to be killed. Yeah, but apparently this Islamophobia garbage is is more important. When consultation for the report was launched, a UKIP spokesman criticized the parliamentary group for taking evidence from groups allegedly linked to Islamism and extremism and making rules and definitions which are likely to curtail the freedoms uh, which have been uh, hard won over centuries of British history. The document also claims Muslims are widely oppressed in the UK. Yeah, right. Oh my God! And, and blames society for Muslims not being as economically successful as some other groups. No, 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 no. no they just don't it's like you know half of, half of apartment buildings. Me, it says British society at large, by virtue of normalized prejudice against Muslim beliefs and practice have come to imbibe a panoply of falsehoods or misrepresentations and discriminatory outlooks. I guess they're talking about all the rape jihad that they've been doing. Adding, academic research has consistently shown that British Muslims face considerably high levels of economic disadvantage uh, than other groups in Britain, considerably higher levels. The report acknowledges that many groups, including some feminist organizations and the National Secular Society, are generally against the use of the term Islamophobia, as it is frequently used to silence criticism of Islamic ideology and extremism. And frankly, Jeff, as I scroll down, I'm I'm really surprised that the feminist group had the guts to come out and say that. However, the report cites that other arguments from Oxford University student Bertie 
Vidgren that giving up the term Islamophobia and with it the possibility of creating legal instruments to tackle it simply because of the perceived risk that may limit free speech would be highly misguided. All right, guys, I have to add a little bit of extra commentary here. It is never, ever misguided to protect free speech. Infinite free speech is a God-given right of man. And let's be sure we're understanding who is saying this stuff. It is someone whose speech, quite frankly, is completely free, as long as it's on the left. It's someone in academia. They know they're safe as long as they put out all of the leftist platitudes and make sure that their language is completely politically correct. So naturally, they have no problem at all with limiting the free speech of the ordinary people that support their academic endeavors. Now let's hear more of this segment. University lecturer Ben Whitman highlights the concept of inseparability of race and religion whereby an attack on the religion cannot be separated from an attack on the race, uh, the report also says. Now you may want to grab onto something, guys, because this is typical leftist circular academic logic. Because this academic says that Islam is a race, therefore an attack on Islam cannot be separated from an attack on the race because Islam is a race because he says Islam is a race. Now that's enough to make anybody dizzy. But you have to be careful, guys, when people use arguments like this that it doesn't make you so dizzy that you fall into the cesspool of their twisted logic. Let's move on. Okay, a similar APPG on British Muslims was launched in 2010, but was forced to relaunch by the following year after a Tory MP and Labour peer quit when Islamist sympathizers, uh, I engage, which had repeatedly defended extremists, were made the group's secretariat and given parliamentary passes. <laughs> Wonderful. I engage has since rebranded as MEND, and a report last year found they still promote extremism, harbor anti-Semitism, and give a platform to Islamist views, including promoting false claims of Islamophobia. There it is, Jeff. That's the article, brother. What do you think? Well, yeah, and I just think it's the misinterpretation of everything that was spoke there. I mean, trying to say that uh, us speaking about their so-called prophet being a paedophile, uh, that we shouldn't talk about it because it's wrong. Well, he was a paedophile. For what mm-hmm. he did with young Aisha, not just Aisha, but other friends and that, uh, involving sex uh, with a, a child uh, that young. Mm-hmm. I don't care what year it was he was born or what year he was 56 years old and she was six or she was nine uh, or she was six when they were married and consummated yeah, when, nine when he uh, had the, sex the with marriage her, yeah. uh, when she was nine yeah. years old. So she hadn't actually reached puberty. And he used to beat her as well, because she said that in her book of Aisha. She, she says exactly when the prophet came to her, uh, and when he wasn't very happy with her, the way he used to push her in her chest, this, that, and that. It's all there, ladies and gentlemen. There's the stories. You, mm-hmm. you read the Adis, the surahs, and it's all there. We're not like the mainstream media. We don't try to misinform you. We like you to have the truth. And we like people to be educated, you know. So, look, if you're not too sure about these things, check it out yourself. That's what we say. The listeners that we know, listen, have studied and do great works of what they do. So, you know, that's all we say. Just pass on your knowledge to other people because people need to know how deadly this cult and their, their whole ideology 
of the way they think about people, young children, homosexuals, females, the way oh, yeah. uh, the, a woman's worth half of that of a man, is all about men being supreme over women and uh, being dominant, the dominant feature, especially where children are concerned, etc. And we know the way that they abuse children. And they also have done. In fact, they use children in battles. You know, the first, sometimes, you know, if there's a modern-day war going on, they would use children to walk through minefields, tell them they're going to meet Allah, and things like that. This is the greatest thing you can do. This is how bad yeah. it is. That's why we find it shocking that a nation or nations uh, of uh, Islamists teach their children that the way to the greatness of that is to go and kill a lot of people, blow themselves up trying. That is it. Yeah. I mean, how can you explain to people your way of thinking? You, you can't explain that way of thinking. It's illogical. It's typical of Mohammedans, I have to say. You know, while they're victimizing everybody else, they scream that they're the victims. They talk about hate crime yeah. and all this kind of mess. And come on, they're the ones, we talk about this all the time. We see all kinds of stories about this, guys, that, you yeah. know, if, if our shows lasted three hours a day and we, had, and, and we had one every day of the week, we still wouldn't cover all the stories that we see We've about the hate that, crime. We, we could committed. do a yeah. show, we, we've often talked on the live yeah. shows, that there's so yeah. many stories out there that we could cover that we would need more staff because we could do yeah. the, the EDL radio show 24 hours a day. But it's only right. me and well, Dave, yeah. and we do get tired. We need to go to bed now and again, don't we, Dave? And Jan, and yeah. Jan as well. You oh, know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It's so hard Certainly. going. But uh, Dave's so right with there's so many stories that oh. pass out of desks. I go on Facebook yeah. and I look and I think, oh, my God. So many I know. stories yeah. that we cover. I say we've always got... So many that we uh, just put as many as we can on the show for the uh, hour and a half, don't we, Dave? But mm. there is so much. All yeah, yeah, there, there is. There is a lot. And that's all hate crimes of Muslims against non-Muslims. But this is typical. Of course, they want it to be Islamophobia to tell the truth about Muhammad, their prophet. I would say this to the Muslims. Why do you want to make it a crime? It's the truth. You're supposed to be proud of Muhammad, your prophet. Why do you want well, to make that a crime? I mean, this is, I've yeah. questioned Muslims before, Dave. I question of your prophet. You like to live your life like your prophet? Oh, yes. I said, did that come to raping children? Oh, no, 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 no. Then they go after you, Dave. Then they go after oh, you. Oh, yeah, of course. You're, you're of wrong. course. You, you, you take it out of a... Out of context. Come truth, on. And they, yeah, oh, yeah. You see... Islam, Dave, and I've always said that I've been saying it for donkey's years, mm -hmm. Islam is undefendable. They can't defend Islam. You get them no, every no. step of the way. Okay, this is one that should not be missed, people. The same ones who are prepared to condemn Presidents Washington and Jefferson for being slaveholders and saying, therefore, that anything that those two men had to say about society or government, must be dismissed because they were slaveholders, are the same ones who are prepared to excuse the Islamic prophet Muhammad for his pedophilia because they are saying that he was a man of his day and in his society. They are not prepared to extend that same logic to founders of the United States of America who happened to be men of their times and in their societies. When people are prepared to selectively parse these things, you have to look at them askance and doubly question everything they have to say. As we move on. That story, folks, that you guys just heard, to me that's extremely important because it reminded me instantly. Now, probably isn't the exact same thing because some people might want to come behind us and correct. It probably isn't the exact same thing. But to free speech in the UK, this appears to me to be the same thing, or very close to it, very close to the same thing as the measure M103, which uh, Canada's parliament passed a few years ago. And you guys see what's going on in Canada now. 
you can't even tell the truth about uh, Muhammad being a pedophile. This is nothing more than making the definition of Islamophobia, whatever the lefties and the Muslims decide that it is, you'll know you've broken the law when you've broken it, and usually it'll be because you're a non-Muslim, and this is the sort of thing that you guys in the UK have got to fight. And, and, and people in the United States of America don't think that the Democrats over here who are about to take over Congress aren't going to look at this story and their mouth starts to water because that will happen over here as well. Now that's the segment from November the 29th, 2018. And it is only the beginning, people. It is very possible that by now, the time that you are hearing this, early January of 2019, that this Islamophobia definition legislation has gone through in the United Kingdom. And as I said to open the show, bad ideas like this do travel. When I said earlier that this could well come over here, I wasn't trying to be alarmist. People, the free speech that the left in all countries wants to quell through public shaming, through fines, through imprisonment, is your free speech. Even if you're listening to this and you disagree with me profoundly, it is your free speech that the rulers of the left and their lapdogs in the fake stream media and their court jesters in entertainment media want to curtail. Not their speech, because they're going to be speaking the new speak. And if you don't know what that is, then you need to read George Orwell's 1984. Because, people, it's not only here in 2019, but it's been here for a while. They just haven't fully rolled out the enforcement aspect of it yet. And it is something, my fellow Americans, that you and I are going to have to fight to the best of our ability. Next week, in part two, we'll get into more detail about this. I hope everyone had a wonderful holiday season. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for listening. And may your God go with you. Goodbye. The Unpleasant Blind Guy is copyright 2019. Anno Domini. Now for Dave's Canes. Extras that help you navigate the new media world. Conservative media done right. You're listening to the SHR Media Network. Hey, this is Michael Wright. And I'm Shannon Wright. Join us for The Right Way with Shannon and Mike, Monday through Thursday from 7 to 9 a.m. right here on SHR Media. Why are they joining us? For fun things like sports, politics. Oh, maybe some news and entertainment. And all kinds of other things. Money and recipes and events, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, so join us Monday through Thursday, 7 to 9 a.m. here on SHRmedia.com. From a public locker inside a dilapidated Long Island rail station comes a show designed to piss off liberals using truth, facts, and ridicule. The Lid Radio Show, featuring the conservative voice from the People's Republic of New York. The Lid himself, Jeff Dummett. Tune in every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific on the SHR Media Network. Go to shrmedia.com. At Lid Radio, we fight for the truth, justice, and a good kosher T-bone. If you don't listen, Hillary Clinton might sneak into your bedroom in her house coat late at night and blame you for her election loss. It's the Lid Radio Show with Jeff Dunnitz.
It's your business diva here, Melanie Collette. I am inviting you to a front row seat as I discuss some of the most intriguing details of wealth and finance with today's movers and shakers in the world of business. Listen in and discover financial truths on a global, domestic, and household scale. Uncover topics that will impact your wallet today and in the future. Money Talk with Melanie airs Monday through Friday, 5 p.m. East, 2 p.m. West, right here on SHR Media and High Plains Pundit Talk Radio. You can't afford to miss it. The new show on the SHR Media Network, Sackheads Against Tyranny. On shrmedia.com, go there quick like a bunny, 11 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Pacific, every Wednesday, live and direct. On the SHR Media Network, shrmedia.com. Be there. For 50 years, I've seen the American people blinded by corrupt politicians, a left dog media, and deceptive Islam. The one thing the elites fear is one man with a cane. I'm Dave Milner. Join me through Spreaker, iTunes, and SoundCloud through SHR Media and the Western Free Radio Network for half a century of experienced perspective on political and social issues weekly on The Unpleasant Blind Guy. And catch me on Jeff Mitchell's EDL Radio on blogtalkradio.com. There's no surrender ever. Because truth is not always pleasant. Broadcasting behind enemy lines in occupied California, a mere two miles from the state capital, the bloviating Zeppelin's Berserk Bobcat Saloon Radio Show can be heard every Tuesday and Thursday night at 8 p.m. Pacific and 11 p.m. Eastern, only on the SHR Media Network. Go to shrmedia.com to listen. You can also watch on the SHR Media Facebook page and the SHR Media YouTube channel. No goldfish were abused in the making of this ad. Hey girls, Carry Girl Gear is here. More and more women every day are concealed carrying, participating in competitive shooting, and getting firearms training. It's not a boys club anymore, and we don't have to shop in their stores anymore either. Finally, a cool and unique clothing line just for women. Dope tees and hats for the patriotic concealed carry and 2A girl. So what are you waiting for? Go check out carrygirlgear.com today. Conservative media done right. You're listening to the SHR Media Network.